This is not the top of the world highway. This is, but that's for a little later. To get to the top of the world highway, you first have to take on the Klondike Highway, then hop on a ferry. You'll tackle frost heaves and potholes a majority of the way, and unfortunately, not everyone can take on this section of road. The point of this journey is Dawson City, a living museum of the Gold Rush era with historic buildings and vibrant cultural activities. Main attractions include the Dawson City Museum, Diamond Tooth Gertie's Gambling Hall, the Sour Toe Cocktail, and the historic homes of Jack London and Robert Service. We stayed two nights at the Gold Rush Campground, which is within walking distance of the town. If you're going to brave the Sour Toe Cocktail and gamble at Diamond Tooth Gertie's, this is where you'll want to stay. There are three other RV parks just outside the city, but you'll have to drive in. The two days we spent in Dawson City are a bit of a blur, but we'll give the best recap we can. And just like that, we're leaving Dawson. <laughs> So this was a fun city, a little different than what we originally thought. What was the town you were uh, referencing? Virginia City. Virginia City in um, Nevada. It's like another old timey city, but anyway, we just thought it would be more like that. But this is very rugged still. Like this city went through. Authentic? Authentic, yeah. <laughs> went through like a big boom and then, you know, only lasted two to three years and then people left, went down to Whitehorse, and so it was basically going to be a ghost town, and it's survived. <laughs> but because during that period, like, a lot of the buildings were left to just kind of rot, no one was taking care of them, so now, like, there's some restoration happening, but it's still very authentic, which is cool, you know, and, like, the roads aren't paved, like, they're all dirt roads, you walk on a boardwalk, so we did the sour toe cocktail last night. <laughs> which is a shot of whatever liquor of your choice, but you know, the traditional one is the Yukon whiskey. Yukon Jack, I think. Yukon Jack, okay. There's a human toe in it. <laughs> so there's that. So we did it. We were like really on and off kind of the whole way up here. Like, are we gonna do it when we get there? Are we not, are we not? And then it was like a firm no. And then the day before we got here, I was like, let's just look at the toe and like see how we feel. And then when we got there, like there's a huge line, like it's a big thing and you know. Yeah, FOMO. Yeah, FOMO for sure. We came to peer pressure. little thing if you're up here just do it you know they ended up telling us 
that like it's coated in epoxy. So like, yes, it's still a human toe, but like it's got a coating of plastic on it, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, the midnight sun. So like technically it's supposed to be, is it summer solstice is like the official day? Yeah. Which is June 21st, but we're up here like June 4th and it's already like, we were walking home at one in the morning last night and it's still right out. That is like really messing with our heads because we're like, well, the sun's out, it's not that late. And the next thing you know, you're like, I'm hungry and it's 10.30 at night. But we put up like the Reflectix um, in the truck camper last night in the shade above the bed, the skylight above the bed. And so that helped a lot because the night before we didn't put it up. And I woke up at 3.30 in the morning and it was bright out. And my brain was like, is it time to get up? And then like Jason heard me fussing around and he started scrolling on his phone and I was like, it's 3.30 in the morning. And he's like, oh, and like put his phone down and was like, I guess we should try to go back to bed. Like it's really messes with your head here. I guess overall though, I don't know, I don't mind it. It is kind of like it messes with your head because it's like one or two, but we've just shifted our like activities to later. So we'll, yeah. we've been getting up at like 8 a.m in Florida time and like going to bed at 10 but now it's like we're getting up at like 10 and going to bed at like 1 <laughs> it's like it's really shifted later yeah anyway. which doesn't matter because you can drive later here because it's yeah. still light out yeah. so it's, it's all very interesting yeah. yeah like our whole day is just moved down the timeline but yeah we're really sad or I'm really sad at least uh to leave Canada I was thinking about it this morning when I was getting ready and we've just had such a good time these last few weeks and we're so excited to explore other parts of Canada. It's definitely like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we're going across the bridge here. Um, it's definitely moved up on our list. So to go to other areas. Um, and since we're on the East Coast, like now I wanna just shoot up to Nova Scotia and check all that out, you know? Yeah. But we're also very excited for Alaska, obviously. Our 50th state, we get to check it off. Leaving Dawson City, you have to take a ferry ride across the Yukon River. The ferry operates seasonally and is a free, government-run service. Top of the World Highway is typically open from mid-May to late September, but be sure to check dates as it didn't open until June 1st in 2023 when we went. You're going to want to check road conditions and weather forecasts before traveling the Top of the World Highway. This highway is about 89 miles long and connects to the Taylor Highway on the Alaska side. The highway traverses high plateaus and ridges providing stunning views. The highest point is about 4,515 feet. If you're traveling to Alaska, we highly recommend taking this route as it felt like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Border crossing in Little Gold Creek is one of the most remote crossings between the U.S. and Canada. All right, guys, big day for us here. We made it to Alaska. 50th state, huh? Yeah. We did it. We did it. We're here. It only took us six years. Yeah. There's not much here. There's just lots of It's so trees. quiet up here. Getting through the border was really easy they literally just asked us where we were from and why he was wearing a seattle seahawks well, hat and, and we have florida plates no and he asked like, well <laughs> he was like oh are you from 
Washington or <laughs> Texas from Florida. And he's like, what? And it's because we have our Texas like registration sticker. I haven't taken it off yet. Yeah. Um, and then I'm wearing a Seahawks hat. And anyways. It's so funny. I feel like traveling full time and like when you change your domicile stuff, like and they ask you these personal questions, you sound so sketch because you're like, well, I'm originally from California, but yes, we lived in Texas, but no, now we're Florida residents. Yeah, and when yeah, people we... ask me where I'm from, I'm like... I, we hesitate, I, which like, like, wait, sounds sketchy anyway. Now I'm from Florida, but like, you know, in my heart. I'm from California. Right. Well, we still have about four hours-ish, right? Yep. And this uh, top of the world highway wasn't bad. So no. I mean, I thought the Klondike Highway getting to Dawson was worse, way worse. Yeah, definitely. Although now we're on the American side, so we'll see how <laughs> how well this gravel road is. Yeah, exactly. At least it's paved. It's paved for a bit after the border crossing, but then we know it turns back into dirt. But yeah, the seventy nine miles from Dawson City to the border of unpaved road really wasn't yeah actually i think it's only 65 yeah. but yeah it really wasn't um bad at all it's time for lunch and to uh see what's in store Snoss. sausage you made it to your 50th state too 49th oh true 49th for her <laughs> she hasn't been to hawaii <laughs> tired of playing guess that smell in your rv we certainly were, and that's why we created Tank Tune-Up. We created this holding tank treatment with a dual action formula that not only breaks down waste, but eliminates odors. Our formula doesn't have fillers or artificial fragrances that honestly sometimes make the odors worse. Tank Tune-Up is so easy to use. Just simply scoop it, rinse it, and forget it. Whether you're hitting the road for a weekend getaway or living the full-time RV lifestyle, Tank Tune-Up makes odors a thing of the past. Scan the QR code or click the link in the the description to get yours today. And if you want to learn more about our product, check out our full video on it. had bad luck trying to see the dredge. Is it a dredge or dredger? I'm like, oh, we're no. gonna go dredge. Okay, dredge number four in Dawson City. We found one in Chicken, Alaska. So I think we read in the book this was brought down in 1996. Yeah. So here it is. And the way these worked up here to mine for gold, you want to talk about it? I untangle yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, so we watched a quick little video, um, but it sits in a pond or in the creek, you know, it's a body of water, and it uses a metal bucket line to kind of like dig the ground out and it brings it inside the dredge and then goes through like a tumbly thing like this <laughs> with lots of water because it's sitting in water so it uses that to kind of like get the Wash sand and silt yeah. and, and eventually you know works the gold out because I believe the gold's heavier and so it kind of takes everything this is a big conveyor belt and uh, so when it gets it all separated it has these big conveyor belts out the back to kind of just like Drop all the rocks. Yeah, drop all the rocks. So in Dawson City, they have, they're called tailings, and it's like, as the dredgers, the dredges moving. move um, forward slowly, they leave like this little like worm tail behind them. <laughs> and so we were wondering what it was as we were driving into Dawson City, but it's like literally just these like rows yeah. and rows of like it's wild how much rocks. there is. Now we know why. Gold. Gold. So this is the Pedro dredge. And 
yeah, it's a very interesting piece of machinery to look at. So if you're driving through, you might as well stop and chicken, take a look at the dredge and, oh no, there's a few other things we're gonna get up to here. So this is the extent of downtown chicken. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's worth a stop. Yeah, they, definitely worth a stop. They yeah. Got a, a bar with cold beer and um Yeah, what? it's literally a gift shop, a liquor store, a bar, and then their uh, cafe. cafe. Yeah. The cafe closes early, so we didn't realize that. Well, early, you know, three they said, three yeah, PM. They, they do so. breakfast and lunch. So but they the, the nice thing, it's like 5.30, 5.45. Yeah. Um, they still serve like some of the stuff they had left over, like they have chili that they made this morning and they had soup. Yeah, they make everything fresh every day. They had some pie left. So, so we got a pie. You can order some of that stuff in the bar. So yeah. if you make it here like us and you're starving. Um, They'll still feed you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I had the cherry pie because we read like pie is the thing to do here. Yeah. And you had the apple. And they both were really good, yeah. you know, homemade pie. You can't really beat that. All right. <laughs> so we also had a beer, very funky little bar with all these hats in it and underwear yeah. and bras. And <laughs> Apparently they, like, at some point during the night, when it starts to get rowdy, they have a cannon, they said. Yeah. And you can take your underwear or bra off or whatever at that time and you shove it into the cannon and they shoot it. <laughs> and then anything that's left over, they pick up and they attach to the ceiling or walls of the bar somewhere. Yeah, so when you walk really in, funny. you're like, what is what going is on? Uh, it's because like it's been through cannon. a cannon. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, definitely worth a stop. Obviously not like a ton to do. But there is like a little RV park if you do need like a resting place for the night. So and there's gas here. Yeah. They advertise it as the cheapest gas and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only gas and chicken. So... Uh, I think we've thoroughly explored, yeah. so we're going to hit the road again. The Taylor Highway is mostly paved, and while it provides beautiful views, this was actually the worst section of highway we experienced, even worse than the Klondike Highway. The Taylor Highway was named after John Taylor, a prospector who discovered gold in the region. The highway ends in Tetland Junction, where it meets the Alaska Highway. We were pretty ready to call it a night once we reached this junction, so we found Toke Recreation Site on iOverlander. We paid at the self-service station and settled in. Now that we finally made it to Alaska, don't forget to subscribe to see everything we get up to in our 50th state.